What up, y'all? <clears throat> Today, we're going to be uh, watching a video. Um, this video is about the Dinosaur Wars. I just typed in Dinosaur Wars. This was the first video that came up. Weird history, 4 million subscribers. So, I am uh, very skeptical of uh, dinosaurs being factual creatures that once roamed the earth uh, like we've been taught. Um, I was very much into dinosaurs when I was a kid. Uh, dinosaurs and cars were like, I was all about those two things. And so I was pretty disappointed um, to grow up and uh, do about 20 minutes of research and find out that it's highly likely that the whole dinosaur phenomena is a scam. Um, and if uh, you do any research, uh, you, you hear this dinosaur wars, dinosaur wars, dinosaur wars over and over and over again, right? So, so dinosaur wars, ooh, that sounds interesting, right? So right off, right off the bat, the topic sounds really juicy. So let's watch this uh, documentary about the early history of uh, paleontology. Arguably, no two people did more to advance the early field of paleontology than okay, Edwin... Okay, so right off the bat, you got the old-timey music to set the scene, to, to put you in the zone of, like, 1800s era, you know, like, like little, little keyboards. And, um, you know, you got some some uh old timey guys so they're uh you know this is right off the bat um you have to be uh, a bit skeptical of any story that starts you know in the 1800s because the longer away time it was the more time there was for uh deception drinker cope and othniel charles marsh between 1864 and Cope's death in 1897, the two men were locked in a race to discover and catalog as many new species of dinosaur as they possibly could. So, Unfortunately, their bitter rivalry resulted in so many underhanded dealings and straight-up felonies that their reputations were forever destroyed. And Okay, so before we get too far into this, hit history is written by the victor. History is written by the richest of the richest people. So, um, right off the bat with this, um, they're, they're painting a story of these two. Okay, so the best way to sell a lie is by making it embarrassed in some, embarrassing in some way. Like if you tell someone a story that you've made up and you add a part in it that's really embarrassing, there, there's a lot higher chance that that person's going to believe what you're saying. And you'll find this um, throughout all kinds of uh, propaganda, this, this type of thing being used. Um, you know, the, the slavery... <laughs> Um, you know, the killing off the natives, you know, like whenever you have, whenever you have someone of authority admitting to doing something wrong, you always have to be skeptical. Fossil hunting carried a dark stain for decades afterward. Today we're talking about the strange few that... So, the story so far is that the history is muddled because these dudes you know, got too caught up with their egos and, um, you know, went crazy finding uh, fossils, right? So, without this story, without the story of the dinosaur wars, you have no historical story for dinosaurs becoming uh, such a mainstream popular thing in our culture. This is the only story you can point at. And um, and so without this story, we have no story about the dinosaurs. We don't know anything about dinosaurs. There's no Jurassic Park, anything like this. So the story is pretty important. So looking at it critically is pretty important. 
Um, so right off the bat, they're saying that these two psychos basically were locked in a battle trying to outdo each other. And the the story reads so far is, is reading like a movie. Created and almost destroyed paleontology. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to the channel below. Now grab Don't your pith subscribe. helmet and let's get Don't going. Don't go watch this video, please. Watch it here. The feud between Cope and Marsh was so intense that the bickering scientists would routinely dynamite their own dig sites to prevent the other... Right off the bat with the propaganda. So, a lot of... A lot of people question the whole dinosaur thing. We're like, why aren't we finding dinosaurs everywhere? And why is it only like official people that are finding dinosaur bones? So right off the bat, you have them trying to reinforce this idea that that many of the dinosaurs' uh, bones may have been destroyed when these two guys way back in the day were looking all over the U.S. for dinosaurs. So you have these fall guys, these useful idiots that are are being uh, scapegoated for why we don't have more examples of dinosaurs. Because when you go to the museum and you see a dinosaur sculpture, you're seeing a sculpture. Those aren't real bones. That's the, that's a sculpture that was made in China. You can go into any museum and ask them, and they'll they'll begr- begrudgingly admit that that it's their plaster cast as casts and stuff like that. None of the bones are actually out for viewing from potentially combing back over the excavation and discovering something. That's a level of pettiness so casually destructive, it's almost admirable. What's wrong with this guy's eyes? Does this not look like a real photo person to you? Like, this doesn't look like a real person to me. This dude's eyes are way too big. There's no telling how many species of dinosaur have gone undiscovered thanks to Cope and Marsh's... Oh, there you go. Oh my god. Exactly what I just said. Oh, well, we'd know more about dinosaurs and we'd have more evidence if these two douchebags didn't blow everything up back in the day. Like, this is such a piece of propaganda. It's hilarious. Literally explosive rivalry. During the early days of the feud, Cope incorrectly reconstructed an Elasmosaurus skeleton, placing the animal's skull at the tip of its tail and believing he had discovered a new species of snake-like dinosaur. Unable to resist the opportunity to deliver a backboard-shattering dunk on his rival. So, what this story reinforces is the idea that we can't, if we go back and try and research early dinosaur stuff, we're just going to run into a bunch of flub because these two dudes kept tr- were trying to outdo each other publicly and their egos got out of hand and and so they're trying whoever made this is trying to to explain this in a way that it's just like okay well you know we used to think these dinosaurs were real but they don't they aren't because these guys you know and it's like if, if paleontology is, is science, then there should be, it shouldn't be that the history is, is this, you know, we should know some scientist's name who, you know, really found the first real dinosaurs, not just these guys that, you know, were just cobbling bones together. Marsh called out Cope's mistake in a letter to the New York Herald, claiming that he had pointed the error out to Cope and that Cope's wounded vanity had never recovered. And another, like, what is this drama? Like, who cares? This is written like a, a, a TV show, like a, like a, like a adventure suspense show, movie or something. Like, this isn't history. This isn't scientific. Um, they want you to, like try and like put yourself in the shoes of these guys or try and make you familiar or or even like um they're trying to make you romanticize the story so you believe the story these two you know douchey rich guys you know we're just out collecting bones and it's funny because these guys might have been real you know i don't even know but they were simply paleontologists they weren't dinosaur you know they were (laughs) they were collecting they were collecting fossils. They weren't necessarily giant dinosaur fossils, you know, and it's so it's easy to like 
grab these two dudes out of history and be all, okay, well, there were these two early paleontologists. Let's make them dinosaur prospectors, you know, and like, let's, let's make them fight each other. And like, so that you have this story so you can tell the story and you believe it's real because there's such a crazy story and there's so much like uh, embarrassment in it. From the crippling blow. In reality, Cope's mentor, Joseph Leedy, had actually discovered the mistake, and Cope had desperately attempted to buy up and destroy every scientific journal that had printed his error in a stunning display of the 19th century equivalent of the someone Where are these scientific journals now? You know, I, because like they're, why don't they show the scientific journals instead of this? story of these two narcissists. My Twitter defense. By the time everything was said and done, the Bone Wars did a go. tremendous so it's, it's again going back to the idea that if you try and look back at, at dinosaur history, you know, it really only starts in about 1850 and even around then, like, all, all the science was really not scientific. So... We have no, basically they're saying all the evidence is very weak. <laughs> amount of long-term good for the field of paleontology. However, at the time, Marsh and Cope were so eager to beat each other in making new discoveries that their work was sloppy and filled with more errors. Why would that, that's so ridiculous. Than a little league baseball game. By the time the excavation dust settled, Marsh and Cope claimed to have identified 142 unique species of dinosaur. Today, less than 40 of their discoveries are considered valid. In fact, Cope is responsible for the whole brontosaurus apatosaurus debate when he mistakenly identified an apatosaurus specimen as a narrative. They're manufacturing history with stuff like this. They're trying to tell us that there was an entire genre of scientific uh, exploration going on that never happened. These, these two dudes were scam artists. And dino, the ideas of dinosaurs is so amazing and crazy that it's very lucrative. And lots of people have made millions and millions and millions of dollars off of dinosaurs. There's a huge industry around dinosaurs. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of motivation by a lot of uh, uh, deep pockets to keep the dinosaur hoax going. New species. Ironically, through no fault of his own, Cope's brontosaurus snafu was validated in 2015 when researchers determined that there were enough significant differences in Cope's specimen to classify it as a new species. When they weren't guys just making history weren't trolling each other in scientific journals and by looking at rocks and blowing up their own dig sites, Cope and Marsh conducted a great deal of their feud at a distance, sending hired agents across the country to do their dirty work. The agents, which included the two paleontologists' respective students, would scour dig sites in secret and try to scoop up valuable fossils. Marsh had more money to burn than Cope and would also... Likely that none of this happened. It's complete BS. To resort to flat out bribery to get the best bones, although Cope was not above skullduggery, you know, like using dynamite. So there wasn't enough. If there were bones everywhere, why were they having to fight over specific sites? Like, none of this stuff makes sense. If, if it makes sense, if you just believe every story told to you and you've just romanticized dinosaurs your whole life and you just believe that they're real because they taught us that in school. And so it's, it's, you know, it's obvious why most people believe that these giant, you know, like Jurassic Park dinosaurs were going all over the place. Um, but if you look at it and, and actually like scrutinize the history, none of it makes sense. And when you look at history and with, there's big chunks of our history that don't make any sense. And it's clear that someone, um, is fooling us, you know. They're they're changing the narrative to hide something that happened or to uh, you know, profit in some way. In a turn of events that might not exactly come as a surprise. Like this picture of this museum, right? These bones. All of us that went to school to you know, uh field trips to the, we thought those were real bones. <laughs> It wasn't until I was in my 30s that I found out that none of those bones are real. 
They're complete, complete fabrications. And if you ask them what they're based off of, they'll be like, oh, well, it's based off of one or two bones that we found. And it's just insane that um, this is the evidence that we have. <laughs> That's it. Prize. Coping. Some bones, a whole world full of bones, full of millions of different species dying over millennia. And these dudes find a couple bones in the ground and say that they're giant reptilian dinosaurs. Marsh eventually like, hired dinosaur hilarious. rustlers. Like, which Occam's razor is, is if you find something, it's most likely the most likely scenario. Like the most likely story is most likely the story. So it's like finding some bones on the ground. They're most likely some sort of species that, that has been around. But these paleontologists are like, no, it's not. These aren't some saber toothed dog. You know, they're, they're not some like some ancient species of normal sized animal. No, they're these multi-story tall building building size reptiles like that we don't have any examples of now and we just have little pieces of bones on the ground no full full skeletons for us all to go look at if they they say they have full skeletons but they can say they can't show them to us so you can't show them to us you can't put some bones on display behind some glass or something because it's too risk like it's they're, they're they say oh they're so valuable we can't put them on display it's like dude king tut's tomb is on display billions of dollars worth of gold give me a break which is a charmingly paleontological term for armed thugs to steal fossils cope kicked things off by paying a prospector to steal bones from marsh's dig in como bluff wyoming and after that the thieving genie was out of the bottle the dinosaur rustlers would spy on rival dinosaur dig sites poach oh james bond see they're trying to make it sound so cool so you really believe the story and you tell your friends a story and so ever it just reinforces the bs fossils and even throw rocks at excavating workers eventually one of the rustler clashes nearly broke out in a full-blown gunfight but tempers cooled and the bone wars carried on without any actual shots being fired. Cope's mentor, Joseph Leedy. So you see, they're, they're like, oh, nothing actually really happened. It's because if something really happened, there'd be more evidence for it happening. They're fabricating something right now from nowhere. So they can't say, oh, there was this actual dinosaur war and, you know, several hundred people were killed because then there'd be several, several hundred people that were affected by this war that they'd have to have evidence for and there, there's too much evidence for them to, to so they keep the story really simple and oh no one really killed each other it wasn't really a war it was just these two guys a rivalry between these two guys oh no Cope's mentor, Joseph Leedy, actually discovered the first dinosaur in America, the Hadrosaurus, in Haydenfield, New Jersey in 1856. A decade so later, Cope joined the Philadelphia Academy. This guy found some bones on the ground and was like, this is a dinosaur. I call it Hadrosaurus. Like, how did this guy in 1850 find some bones and just... I'm going to I'm going to make believe this was a giant reptile that is a direct descendant of birds like <laughs> natural sciences and set up a fossil hunting operation in Haydenfield. Marsh caught wind of this and bribed some of the workers Hold to on, send I any. So. I think Al Al Larkin Rose once sent me this picture and he was like, can't you see it? It's a dinosaur. And it's like. My daughter could draw a better dinosaur than that the, on a rock. Like, these dudes, they're so obsessed with dinosaurs and space and all this sci-fi fantasy shit that they've completely la la let it clog their judgment. Like, anyone with crayons could make something that looks like this and take a picture of it and say it was dinosaurs. And then when you have like the uh, the um, the uh, what's the museum? Oh, I'm sure I'll, I'll get to that soon. 
hunting operation in Haydenfield. Marsh caught wind of this and bribed some of the workers to send any fossils he discovered to him rather than cope, presumably while twirling his considerable facial hair. An understandably enraged cope found out what Marsh was doing, and part two of the Bone Wars had begun. Astonishingly, Cope and Marsh weren't always at each other's throats. The two men initially met in... Bur these stories, these stories, stories just, it's all a bunch of fluff to make it, make something seem like it happened. It's likely everyone and everything is fabricated in this story. And this is what we know about dinosaurs. These are the people that invented the word dinosaur. These are the people that, you know, dug up a bunch of bones and told us that there was something unbelievable basically and everyone believes it because authority has told us it's true berlin in 1864 when studying abroad and were impressed enough that they actually named dinosaur species after each other obviously cope and marsh's brief professional camaraderie didn't translate into a lasting friendship either that or they thought bribery theft and destruction of priceless artifacts were things good buddies do Towards the end of the Bone Wars, Cope was pretty beaten down. He was broke and divorced with nothing more to show Always for his bitter happens. feud with Marsh These than a, stories. Um, a tarnished reputation and a collection of fossils, situation. and Marsh did his best to take so those, too. I'm not too. seeing any dinosaurs in that picture. A tarnished reputation and a collection of fossils, and Marsh did... Um, I'm not seeing any dinosaurs. You could find those at the beach anytime. These, these, these arthropods or whatever. It is whatever. best to take those, too. In the 1880s, Marsh became the head of the U.S. Geological Survey, and he pushed oh! through a lot. Oh, so the truth comes out. So, okay, USGS um, is, is one of the biggest fabricators of history and one of the biggest uh, government agencies that... Basically, USGS went out and 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 um, explored every inch of the United States and surveyed everything and made a list of what was on, what is on every parcel before any Americans or any um, anyone even got out here, and so they knew the history from what uh, what was was out there in in the U.S. in North America, what. Um, ruins or anything like that so they knew what was going on and um there they were basically the agent the agency of the u.s that went out figured out where, what everything was and took stuff down you know along with the smithsonian um they've t totally just changed our history by changing uh what we found when we found it when we went out and explored north america so if this guy's immediately went into that field then obviously the dude is completely full of it and or a useful idiot who was used to push an agenda and he's pushed this guy they're piling a lot of agenda on this guy's story um if he's usgs and he's the guy that that invented dinosaurs like it's pretty funny there it's it's almost like the uh the history writers just like they got tired of having to write new stories for everyone so they just like made these guys up and had them invent tons of things law stating that any fossils collected using any kind of government survey and he put those too in the 1880s marsh became the head of the u.s geological survey and he pushed through a law stating that any fossils collected using any kind of government funding automatically belong to the smithsonian museum his goal Okay, so like I said, so <laughs> the Smithsonian has controlled all, basically, if a cop goes, or, or a city official goes, you know, someone, someone says they find some bones, right, in their yard, they're digging, some farmer finds some bones, he goes to the city officials and is like, hey, city officials, there's bones out here. Those city officials go to investigate the bones. That, because of this douchebag's law, or this law that this fake person, they're, they're saying historically, was the guy who put this through. So, they're the reason, they're what gave the Smithsonian 
legal precedent to basically confiscate anything historical from the United States. If you don't know about Smithsonian covering stuff up, you need to research them. They've destroyed artifacts. Uh, you know, they, they've controlled our history and the narrative of our history for several for since the 1850s, obviously, or 1800s. Uh, along with the U.S. U.S. Geological Survey, so these people are the biggest scumbags, um, liars, deceivers that we've come across in our history. So to just believe everything or anything they say, it's the same thing with NASA. It's like okay, government lies, authority lies, but believe NASA. You know, like authority lies. We know Smithsonian lies, but believe them about dinosaurs. It's like really, like holy crap. Goal was to take Cope's fossils, but Cope was an obsessive record keeper, and he had the receipts to prove that he had indeed blown his own. Such a horseshit story. Cash to acquire the majority of his specimens. Proof of his fossil ownership weren't the only receipts Cope brought. After nearly having a specimen seized by the Smithsonian thanks to Marsh's chicanery, Cope published a damning record of the many slimy misdeeds and outright felonies Marsh had committed during the Bone Wars, corroborated by many of Marsh's former employees. Marsh was forced to resign from his position as the head of the Geological Survey, and as an added ironic twist of the knife, he was unable to prove ownership of most of his vast fossil collection. So, in accordance with the law he'd championed in an attempt to screw over Cope, the majority of Marsh's fossils were seized by the Smithsonian. Cue sad trombone. Seized by the Smithsonian. And then what does the Smithsonian say? They say, oh, our people are looking at it, and, and they, uh, they'll either make a write a report about it or they won't. But there's been thousands of instances where you could, if you look at any old newspapers, you can find stories where they're like, you know, there was this discovery of these ruins or something, and Swissonian showed up, knocked down the ruins, took them away, you know, like, took everything, basically, like, you know, and then, and then you never hear from anything again. And the Smithsonian, I think, was caught uh, burning, destroying uh, skeletons that were found that had um, elongated heads and stuff like that there, and the, the, uh, in California, Catalina Island, there was like dozens of sets of uh, giant bones, like giant six, seven foot tall bones um, that were ancient um, along the islands here in California coast. They found some of the oldest remains. And, um, you know, the, the we don't know anything. The Smithsonian and uh, has, has controlled the narrative for 200 years. And... Um, we don't know the real story about what happened in the U.S. And the story that they're teaching us in school, um, cowboys and Indians and, um, you know, that kind of stuff is just, it's likely not true. Had Twitter existed in the late 19th century, Marsh and Cope would be adding and subtweeting each other every minute of the day. Instead, they had to make do with ridiculing each other. See, they're trying to, like, make, bring it into pop culture and make it funny and, like, oh, this is such a memorable... That was such a cool thing about the dinosaur wars. Like, so you just believe it all. It's just each other in the scientific yes. journals of the day, constantly pointing out the other's errors and inaccuracies while trumping up their own theories in the pages of these academic publications. They would even attempt to rename dinosaur species that the... Like, we don't even... They're showing us some publication. Do we know even know that exists? Does it even... Can we even look it up? Is there? Is it, you know, has it been verified that it's from when it is like we don't know any of this stuff we're just believing this documentary because someone made a story about it other had discovered in a particularly outrageous example marsh cope and joseph Leedy engaged in a protracted argument over the name of a species all three men had independently discovered like the episode of the simpsons where bart milhouse and martin can't decide who gets to keep the in the, the pop culture radioactive man comic the expansion of railroads opened up the American West, and Marsh and Cope wasted no time racing each other to the Pacific coast to discover more fossils. It would turn out to be one of the most lucrative decisions of their respective careers. New excavation sites in states like Wyoming and Colorado. What was that? They show a train with a bunch of what looked like fossils and bones on it, but it's not fossils and bones. It was, they're obviously 
quarrying or something like that. It's just this whole, like, well, where's the real shit that has to do with these real guys? Because these photos don't even look real. Colorado yielded some of the most famous finds in paleontological history, including the discoveries of Triceratops. Why would these dinosaurs only be in Colorado? That makes no sense. We would be finding them everywhere. Stegosaurus and Allosaurus. But the enthusiasm with which the two men attacked their rival. So, again, in the 1840s, some random rich dudes found some bones in the ground and made up that they looked like these things right here. This is not, this is a theory. This theory that's been forced down our throats since we were infants. They sell us on dinosaurs. And we put a lot of money into that throughout our lifetime. Um, this whole... Woo, dinosaurs, Jurassic Park, like biggest movies of all time, people. Rivalry continued to do almost as much harm to the field as good. Of course, and back you back to this whole like, oh, well, the 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 uh, the evidence is really fishy. You already that know man. that Marsh firmly believed in putting his money in the right palms to give him the edge over Cope. The problem was everyone else knew it, too. When some railroad workers unearthed an impressive cache of fossils in the 1870s, they contacted Marsh, but hinted that they were also talking to like, Cope. These people though... are quarrying. They aren't digging artifacts. Why fabricate? Where's the footage of the actual people digging dinosaurs? Why do you keep using quarrying footage? Where is the evidence? Well, they weren't, knowing that Marsh's need to outbid his rival would allow them to ask for some truly ridiculous prices. Marsh would have fallen hard for that Nigerian princess scam if dinosaur bones were on the table. Princess and Skrillex Twinkie. Although Marsh eventually became the head of the U.S. Geological Survey, Cope scored an early victory by getting a position with the organization to survey new territory out west. He used this position to document and claim credit for as many species as he possibly could, which angered pretty much all of his peers, including his mentor, Joseph Leedy. Marsh responded to Cope's glory hogging in typical Marsh. Is this like a Civil War photo? Looks like a Civil War photo. Fashion. He hired a bunch of goons to infiltrate. Goofy keyboard, play this piano still going. Trade Cope's expeditions and steal fossils. You really have to admire his consistency. Marsh was born poor, but he had a wealthy uncle in George Peabody who founded the Museum of Natural Science at Yale University. Oh! In a shocking coincidence, Marsh... Good God. So, Peabody. So this is, this is almost exactly like the uh, Smithsonian. Like, these two dudes are connected to the biggest deceivers we've ever known in history. Yet you believe all their dinosaurs that they invented are real. Marsh received his first academic position at the museum not long. Where are the bones? They haven't shown any bones. <laughs> After it was founded, Marsh's uncle That's funded not a many bone. of his. I can draw with that with a marker, a sharpie. And it, I mean, where's where's the size? This could be the size of my thumb, or it could be the size of a truck. We don't know. They're not showing any context. They're not showing anything like where, if these dudes did all this work, where's their body of content? Why can't we look at it? Studies where provided are all the bones? So the bones, the, the Smithsonian took them. So why, why, what is the Smithsonian even doing? Like, why can't we find this guy's information and with the valuable connections that would eventually make him the head of the geological survey uncle peabody's patronage helped marsh keep up with coke these are, who was born these are robber barons people these are like the people we've learned all about yet you're going to believe them born into wealth and had a sizable inheritance which would quickly evaporate once he met marsh rich guys not scientists. Despite Rich Coke's guys. victory in effectively getting Marsh fired from the Geological Survey and having most of his specimens seized by the Smithsonian, Marsh actually discovered more dinosaur species, and both men died poor and with academic reputations that could gently be described as less than favorable. 
They were ultimately both casualties of the Bone Wars rather than victors. The real winner was Joseph Leedy. He eventually got sick of the conflict between Marsh and his former protege, Cope, and left dinosaur hunting altogether to study other prehistoric species, ultimately discovering more than 400 species of protozoans and invertebrates. The Smithsonian also made out pretty good. Thanks to the rivalry and Marsh's self-defeating law, the Smithsonian wound up with an impressive collection of dinosaur bones. And they... Co or they didn't. They just ended up with an impressive collection of bones that they probably just got rid of and were like, yeah, those were dinosaurs. All our scientists have checked it out. It's cool, they're dinosaurs. Died in 1897, but he tried one last time to score a spectacular dunk on his hated rival. In his will, Cope stipulated that his brain was to be removed from his body and weighed, and challenged Marsh to do the same upon his death to see whose brain was the heaviest. Cope Stupid story, like go way over the top with their rivalry, like... It just makes it such a cool story. Cope hoped that his own pettiness would be matched by Marsh. But Marsh, showing restraint for perhaps the first time in his life, declined to accept the challenge and took the secret of his brain weight to the grave in 1899. The rivalry between Edward Drinker Cope and Othniel Charles Marsh pushed the field of paleontology forward more than any other period in history, but their reckless and decidedly unscientific behavior gave dinosaur hunting an unsavory reputation that lingered for generations. So who are you? Team Marsh or Team Cope? What about so Team yeah. Leedy? Let us know in the comments below. You and while to. you're at it, subscribe. If we consider ourselves intellectuals and truthers, we have to be prepared to reevaluate everything they taught us in school. These dinosaur obsessors are the same people who are obsessing on uh, space and uh, believing everything that, that, that NASA tells them. Um, these people are delusional, and a lot of these people consider themselves truthers, which boggles my mind. And anyway, until next time, Uncle Shady out. Peace.